Just thought I'd do a really quick video just to show what I'm doing on my Toyota Celica. It's a GT4 ST205. Uh, it's a 1994 uh, 3S GT engine. Just changing the uh, valves to oil seals in situ uh, without removing the cylinder head. Bought this tool on Amazon. It was like £20 thereabouts. Um, I had to modify it a little bit. I just had to cut small sections off with an angle grinder just so it clears the um, each corner um, so each valve in each corner basically it wouldn't have cleared it otherwise so just cut these small sections off on both sides so it clears them valves and then so yeah it's pretty straightforward I just whip the time belt off uh, turn the crank so it's uh, bottom dead center on the cylinder that you're working on and then um, I just fed string or rope, ideally, inside the spark plug hole, obviously with spark plug removed. And then turn the engine to, to, you know, slowly turn the engine clockwise so that it, um, the piston squashes the rope against the uh, valves so the valves don't drop when you, when you take the uh, pressure off the spring to remove the collets. Um, so this is what, what I've been changing. Valve stem seals, um, so it's as simple as this really. Quite tricky to hold the phone and do this at the same time. that's removed easy peasy let's bob them down there so they're safe you don't lose them I mean in an ideal world you would have some tissue blocking like the holes that go down to the sump where the oil drains so that you don't lose the collet down there um, and then you just take this out of the way take the spring out Slide that over, and then I've just been using this this tool that I bought on eBay for you removing the stem seals. Let's bob that down there, quite tight. There we go. It's one exhaust valve, oil stem seal. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, putting it back together um, is a bit is the tricky part obviously um, this tool would be better if it locked if it locked in place because obviously then you could put the collets in when you know when the springs compressed um, and it stays compressed but it's not too bad you just got to compress it manually and then with your other hand basically try and feed the collets in which is a bit of a pain but it's not too bad there are tools like there's a laser one that you can get that, that's like a screw that screws down and it holds the spring compressed so that you can get both hands in with the collet which is obviously easier or you could get another person to help you compress the spring down um, at the same time and obviously once you've once you've finished with this cylinder so I've done so far I've done um, this first cylinder and I've done the intake valves on the second cylinder um, so I'm just going to do these two now and then it's just a case of um, lowering the crank back down uh, so anti-clockwise removing this rope spark plug out of that cylinder and then just a rinse and repeat really it's pretty straightforward stuff uh, this side the in the inlet valves are a bit harder uh, the intake valves are a bit harder to do just because there's less room back here but it's still pretty straightforward there's nothing really um, it's just a bit fiddly really but it beats taking the head off in my opinion and um, yeah I just use the bolt holes obviously just be a little bit careful to use the bolt holes for the um, for the uh, cam cover ga for the cam cover and just use those holes really it's pretty straightforward I'll put a link to the um, to the tool in the description if any questions just feel free to give me a shout cheers when you come to fit the new uh, stem oil seals um, you need to make sure that you get them in the right order so the uh, brown one is on the intake side the green one is on the exhaust side 
Um, also, if you're using OEM seals, the, the um, intake side has got uh, NGK mark. NGK? NLK? Either way. It's got a marking on there. <laughs> and the um, the um, exhaust side hasn't got that. Just to just a note, but yeah, the different sizes. So I'm gonna make sure that you get them in the right in the right order. Um, so when you come to fit the new one, I've got a new one here. I'm just fitting one on the on the exhaust side. Um, so what you want to do is what I've been doing is just putting some oil in there, getting them oiled up nicely, and then let that drain off. And then you want to make sure that it's clean um, down the um, the bottom of the valve stem where the um, seal fits. Make sure that there's no crap down there, basically. And then you just bob it on nice and carefully. And then what I've been using is an 11 3 8 11 millimeter 3 8 so deep socket with an extension. Just be really careful because it's really easy to damage that new seal when you're fitting it and there's all sorts of like drifts and you know punches that you can buy to fit these properly. This seems to be working for me but um, yeah just be really careful. So you just want to don't, don't want to damage the seal or the spring. Yeah, just push that down so it goes to the bottom and then let's put my light to one side. What I do is, you don't want to break out the sledgehammer for this job. You just want to get that nice and lined up. And then you want to tap on on the top of here lightly with a hammer, but not like, you know, don't go to town on it. Um, basically, when you when you start tapping it, uh, you'll feel it going down. And you'll um, when it hits the end, you can feel it. It's like a, it's like a thud when you hit it. Um, it's pretty obvious that it's seated, but just double, triple check that it's all the way down, it's seated properly. And then once you've tapped it all the way down, just check the seal just to make sure you haven't damaged it in any way, um, obviously. And yeah, it's as simple as that really. Um, so it's going to be hard for me to hold the camera and do this at the same time. Might not even attempt it. Um, so There's no point attempting it to be honest. Um, but it's pretty straightforward, just put that on there tap this down obviously nice and nice and straight remembering that the valve is is at an angle a slight angle um, obviously do your best not to damage the seal and if you do you have to replace it so it probably wouldn't hurt to have a couple of spare seals but to be honest I haven't damaged one yet so just go steady and be careful also worth mentioning is on the on this particular engine because the engines tilted it's cambered on the inlet side um, when you put the string down into the bar it tends to kind of go towards the inlet side um, and then when you compress it up maybe I haven't put enough enough rope down there but when you compress it up it the valve drops slightly on this exhaust side not enough for it to fall inside the cylinder and plenty enough space there for me anyway with the amount of string that I've put down there in order to get the collets on it's just worth mentioning that when you come to unless you know maybe put more string in than I've put in you know but when you come to compress the spring down and uh, to, to remove the collets um, if the if the valve doesn't have enough um, enough pressure underneath it to um, to push against it, it's basically gonna it's gonna be difficult to for it to pop the collets out. So you just gotta either put more string in there and try that, or you just gotta be patient and keep working it. Eventually, the collets will pop out. Um, it's it's a bit tricky to put them back in that way because obviously if the valve stem was higher up, it would be easier. But with this side, it's generally easier anyway than the other side because of it's much more there's much more space here to to access so it's easier to fit the valves sorry to fit the collets anyway you can see a bit more clearly here where i've cut a section away off this tool on purpose because if i hadn't have you know the tool would have come out to here and there wouldn't have been no access to this um this last valve and it's the same on each four corners
So on the collets, you've got this like groove. It's like a male groove that slots into like a female um, groove on the top of the valve stem. It's hard to see because it's all covered in grease. Um, there's like a groove just there in the center of the video. Um, you want to get those two grooves lined up and then what you want to do is get the valve spring compressor it's very central um, when you're releasing the pressure onto the back up of the, off the spring because that will stop the collets from kicking out and it'll, it'll cause it to, to seat nicely. Um, so I'm just going to attempt to, um, I've got one in there but I've had to kind of cockle the spring compressors over slightly in order to be able to take this video because uh, there's a I've jammed a socket in there to hold the spring compressed while I'm doing this just to um, so I've got a free hand to hold the phone basically. Uh, one thing that I quite like to do sometimes is get a little bit of grease, not much, and just bob that onto the end of your collet. Um, it's tricky to do like this, but you just pop the grease on there, and that helps hold the um, helps hold the collet onto the valve while you're messing around because it's quite a fiddly job. Um, right, so that kind of looks like that. Just a bit of grease on there. It it kind of doesn't help when the screwdriver is magnetized or the collet's magnetized in my opinion because it makes it more fiddly so if you can find something that's not magnetized screwdriver that's not magnetized and then that would be ideal but it's not like at the world of difference so just bob that just like that the other side's coming away slightly um, so the the opposite one, the one that I have that I fit earlier, is just needs a little bit of encouragement in this direction, but it's kind of jammed by the um, by the spring compressors with the nature of the way I've compressed it. So what I'll do is try and put the phone in such a place it'll stay. Easier said than done. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move the, phone, the camera away, but I'm going to slowly release pressure off this, um, and then I'll show you what to look for. Um, it's going to be awkward because I've got to kind of compress the spring again, remove that socket out of the way, and then try to move the spring compressors over that way slightly to the right in order to. Um, for the to release the pressure uh, centrally if that makes sense so I'm just going to do that now and then I'll show you how it looks how it's going to look once it's all how it should do right just going to slowly bring the compressors up there we go right if you're not really sure if they're in the right place like I'm not at the moment just give it a little compress and a little um, let the pressure off, pressure on, pressure off, pressure on, pressure on, off, just to make sure that you're happy with how they're seated. And then obviously move them out of the way, clean the grease off the top, just to have a proper look at them, just to make sure that they're definitely seated. fairly happy with that if you compare it to one that I haven't done there is a bit of a gap there which is normal um, so yeah that's it basically it is a tricky process they are readily fiddly to fit um, but it's just perseverance and patience and all the rest of it and just make sure the spring compressor is essential because that makes a world of difference so I've changed all the stem seals just to give you an idea um, of how much this string that I used, obviously ideally you'd use like a thicker, like more like a rope, um, but this is all that I had um, available, it seems to have done the job. 
Um, just thought I'd give you an idea as to how much of it I used. Um, so I'll just start removing it. This cylinder's now at bottom dead centre. Um, just be gentle when you're pulling it out because if it starts to snag, you don't want to tear it because obviously that would be bad. <laughs> um, I prefer using this method to the air. Um, there's like a like a screw down airline attachment that you can get screw into the spark plug hole. Um, but to be honest, it's a bit of a waste of time, I think. Um, and you can just do this. Obviously, this has got its drawbacks as well, but I haven't really got a filter on my compressor, and it's full of crap. I didn't really want to be blasting um, nasty shit into my cylinder from my compressor so plus it leaks and it'd been annoying for it to be leaking air for literally hours on end while I'm doing these seals tied a knot on the end just so I know that that's definitely the end and none of it's dropped in there um, I use these long nose pliers snipe nose pliers um, to help feed it in just literally grabbed the end of it just pushed it down in there it's a bit of a tedious process like so um, but you know just what you gotta do and that's it really jobs are good enough.